Well, hello there. It's Steve here, and I'd like to talk uh, about a very important artist to me, an artist called Georges Seurat, 19th century French artist. Important to me because it was looking at Seurat that was a breakthrough moment for me and allowed me to break painting down into its smallest parts and to realise, actually, I could have a go at it. Sira was, of course, the artist who painted uh, Sunday Afternoon at La Grande Jatte, which I believe is in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. It is a painting which took him uh, two years to paint. It's painted in tiny little dots and tiny little what he called optical mixtures, which means the tiny dots are next to other coloured dots, which emphasise and make that dot uh, or that colour stand out uh, more strongly than if it was against a different colour or just standing out on its own. This painting took so long that the lady standing on the extreme right, who he was in a relationship, actually left him because she couldn't, uh, couldn't put up with him working on this for so long. Now let's just say a little bit about the background of uh, George Seurat and put him in a historic context. Seurat was working at a time when there were big breakthroughs in scientific knowledge of how we actually see and people were realising that we have a layer at the back of our eyeball which is called the retina and it's made of tiny little cells. Some of those cells are blunt, they're called rods, and some of those cells are sharp, they're called cones. And the cones actually pick up detail and the rods pick up the general colour of things. And as the as twilight comes and it gets darker and there's less light coming through, it's the rods which are actually doing all the work. So they're just basically picking up the basic shape of things. Now, of course, this had a huge impact on the way he painted. When he's painting in tiny little dots, you could almost imagine his paintings as being like uh, how the retina picks up the picks up vision, picks up vision of every, anything, light coming into the eye, whether it's a still life, a landscape, or you're looking at a member of your family, it basically is broken down into little dots, very much like the computer screen that you're looking at at this moment is broken down into little pixels. Well, Sura got there first. The other discovery was uh, the way in which one could categorise colour. And here we have a colour wheel which was actually put together by the German poet Goethe. Uh, this is research into this type of thing at, right at the end of the 18th century going into the 19th century. And people were looking at colour more scientifically and realising that, for example, if you put a violet against a yellow, both colours stand out more brightly. If you put a red against a green, the same thing happens. And these are complementaries because they're opposite sides of the colour wheel. And Sura was using this. So if you go back to Le Grand Jat, you will actually see that in the grass, there's actually little orange strokes. And these orange strokes make the green stand out more brightly. You see, when you mix colour on a palette, sometimes it can go a bit muddy. When you put colour down onto a canvas, the colour can go thin. But if you put the colour next to another colour, which makes that one sparkle, it mixes in the eye, as Sura would say, an optical mixture. And this, this scientific approach is really uh, the idea behind his painting. This painting here, which is the forest at Pontombert, this is quite an early-ish uh, painting by Seurat, much earlier than the uh, Le Grand Jatte. Um, it's a very, very important painting to me because at a, as age 15, when I actually copied this painting in an art lesson, it was a light bulb moment and it made me realise that uh, this is my doorway into painting because it broke everything down into these tiny little dots, these tiny little strokes. And it made me realise, actually, I can build up a painting, I can paint, because basically this is how we see things anyway. So it's very, very important for me, and this is why I'm very keen to teach people on Georges Seurat. Now, I understand that people are different, people's 
minds are wired differently to others. Some of you might not pick this up, but I'm hoping that this will be a help to you, uh, maybe getting you into painting by looking at this artist. Because what then I found was that my brush strokes became longer, they became more personal to me, and I went on to uh, be more interested in things like German expressionism. But in all my paintings, I've never left behind the influence of Seurat. He's always there. He's always in the back of my mind uh, helping me. So he's a very, very important artist to myself. Now, uh, the painting which I'm going to show you uh, now and which I'm going to copy is this uh, later painting of the Eiffel Tower. And I wanted to pick something simple, and I would suggest that if you're starting painting, don't set yourself up for a fall, don't copy something or try to do something that's too ambitious. Go for something simple, and that's what I'm doing here. It's um, quite an easy painting, really, to start with. It's just uh, areas of colour and some quite simple shapes. But um, this is a, it's, it's a lovely painting. What it also gets across is what the Impressionists were discovering, um, is that what the effects of light in reality, in nature. We tend to think of light uh, from a photographic point of view as it's something that actually defines form, light and shadow. That's how you uh, draw, that's how you paint using shading. Uh, but what the Impressionists realised was that, in fact, light dissolves things. If you look in towards the light, or if you have a very hazy sunlight, it doesn't uh, create form and actually destroys form and actually creates something more beautiful and this is what the impressionists were uh, interested in and this is what I'm going to show you how to copy. Okay so let's look at painting our Surat. Now what I've done is I've um, printed out this uh, picture off Google Images, uh, this is, um, you, you're allowed to do that and uh, I printed it in the middle of a piece of A4 and I've just scribbled on the back with a 2B pencil, quite a soft pencil, and I've gone across all where the, the tower was and around the edges as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a sheet of paper. Now you could use cartridge paper. One of the papers I really like is C Whites. C Whites of Brighton um, now do a recycled paper which is great. I mean, it's for just, you know, trying things out. It's great, and it's nice to help the environment as well. Now, you can stick this down with some tape, but I'm just going to hold it down because it's very simple. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to very simply uh, draw over the top, a bit like when we used to trace things at school. Okay, so I'm going to do the outer edge. I'll tell you a little bit about the outer edge of Sura paintings because he was a, an interesting artist from that point of view. Just do the outer edge. Then I'm going to do the tower, which is very simple structure, very simple shape, like this, going up into the no, into there, oh, like this, hold down the paper properly. The arch underneath. There's a platform here, isn't there? That's as far as I could ever go up the Eiffel Tower, because it has vertigo. And there's a little passage here, some stripes here, and there's a basically, so there's a structure in the middle. So basically, very, very easily, just sketch it out like this. There's some kind of structure there, that's probably the a hotel or something. There's a there's an interesting series of shapes down the bottom. This looks like a bridge. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so it's best, that basically is just my drawing, that's all you need to do. There's a tree coming in here, I'll just do that. Okay, very easy. Okay, and there it is on the paper, ready to uh, to paint. And uh, don't um, don't uh, I just a two B pencil. Um, I've just I used a four H pencil to draw over. An H B would fine. You don't want to make too many sort of heavy marks at this point of at this point. So what we're now going to do is we're going to talk about painting it. So there's my copy, and even though I've drawn with it over it with. Um, Pencil, I can still see, i uh, got a really good idea of what it looks like. Now, um, when we uh, are looking at painting, I'm painting here with acrylics. He painted in oils. Acrylics is fine. Acrylics are brilliant for starting out as an artist. And what I've done is I've put out some colours. Um, I've got two palettes here. They're both ceramic. Um, I go around a lot of car boot sales and... 
uh, charity shops and find old plates which I use as pallets because they're, they're, they're great. Uh, they co cost hardly anything. This is, I don't know, even know what this is, a little fondue plate or something like that. But I put a lot of white. Uh, when you're painting, you tend to use a lot of white. And then also on this, which is a little slightly more professional little ceramic palette, uh, I'm putting down colours. But can you see how I'm separating my cold colours over there and my warmer colours there? And that's quite important because when you start mixing cold colours and warm colours, you get muddy colours. I'm trying to keep my colours pure. That's why I've got uh, several different brushes here. Now, um, professional artists tell me that uh, they use one brush for each colour. But what happens if you don't have that many brushes? I'm going to assume you don't. I've just got three here. These are very simple nylon brushes. Very nice. Um, not, not very expensive. And uh, they, as you can see, they're not very thick. We're doing small dots, so we don't use big, need big brushes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one brush for cold colours, one brush for warm colours, and this one just for for luck. And uh, when you, the other thing oh, is to have two different waters. I've got two jars of water here. I use a jar of water for warm colours and a cut jar of water for cold colours. And also have some cloth because this is just kitchen towel that you're always going to need that and a nice um, a nice apron protects your surface with um, newspaper thing about acrylics is that if they get onto clothes you cannot wash them out they just dry a concrete hard and uh, yes my wife will tell you about that now where do you start I'm going to start this painting with, there's a nice warm, almost cadmium yellow, and that's where I'm going to start. So here's my warm colour water, and there's my cadmium yellow, and I'm going to just mix some of that up. And so it's kind of a, uh, you, this is a bit sort of trial and error, because acrylics, different makes of acrylics go down differently, but this one here is pretty cheap, and I am going to... Um, yeah, I'm going to put it down not too thick, but let's let's have a look. So the thing about this is when you look at it, there's yellow everywhere. So basically, I'm going to just start splashing all over. There's, there's some in the sky. It's all over the place. It's like he's seen the joy of life in the sky, and um, there's there's yellow in the actual um, in the tower, there's yellow in the sky, there's yellow in the tree, there's not so much yellow in this bit down here, there's yellow in the girders. There's this, then as it goes up, as the structure of the, um, of the Eiffel Tower goes up, it seems to be even more yellow, it seems to be turning to yellow as it goes up into the light, because I think that's what he's capturing here. Now I'm not being too um, careful, I'm sure I would go mad if he saw me painting now, because he's saying you're doing this too fast. Um, I'm not that interested in doing it like a Sura. I'm basing it on a Sura, and I like uh, fast painting, which is far more like the way Monet would have painted. So I'm going to put my yellow down, and I'm putting it down everywhere. Okay, so I've done my yellow and I've gone all over, uh, dabs of yellow everywhere because if you look at the painting there's a lot of yellow. I just remember with acrylic, marvellous thing about acrylic is you can't really ruin a painting with acrylic because you can always go over the top of it. It's not like watercolour which is quite unforgiving, it's uh, something you can just paint over the top of. And remember you might think, have I put down enough yellow? Well remember we can always put more yellow down later on. But the next colour I want to look at, and before I go on I just want to wash out my wall colour brush and I've got some kitchen towel here and I'm going to dry it out um, and it's a good uh, idea to keep your brushes as clean as possible don't let the acrylic get down into this metal bit that's called the ferrule because what that will happen is uh, it will make the, um, uh, the, the brushes splay out. I'm now going to go and I'm going to get my cold colour water and I'm going over to this green this is an emerald green, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of this with some of my, whoops, my, uh, my white over here. Not too much, I'm just going to create a very pale green colour with this. Okay, and I might need to mix a little bit more of this, but I'm just going to start off with this, because what you'll see is all over that painting is a really very pale green. This is quite remarkable. Now one of the problems about 
getting things off the internet and printing them is uh, when you go onto the internet things are different colours and it's always a real shock when you see um, you go to somewhere like the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and you realise a painting you've loved all your life is a completely different colour. But what I'm going to do now with this pale green is I'm going to put it all over. Now, oops, a little bit thick, should, should be a little bit uh, less thick than that, a bit, a bit heavy handed I'm afraid. But then you put this down and you put this and you put it in between the yellows. The yellow is still standing out. Okay, and there's some, this green in the in the actual tower, in the, the negative spaces in this shape here that's in between the first sort of pyramid structure is down here. There's some of this pale green down here in these trees, not so much down in the structure of the bridge or anything like that, but there's a lot of it around. Go in between, then go over the top of the yellows, go in between and like this, so till you've got this completely covered all over. And uh, that's just the start, but there's a lot more work to do. Okay, so that's getting nicely covered and it's all beginning to come together. Now, if you look at the painting again, you'll notice that there's a darker green. And so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna add some of this green here to that paler green that I had. That's all I'm gonna do. And I'm just going to make that more of a mid-green, less of a light green. So let's do that. Light, darker dots. And that should work. And then, here we go. Darker, darker, slightly darker dots. Oh yeah, here we go. Now one of the things he used to do, I just, as I'm painting this, this frame, um, Surat realised that when you put a painting in a frame, the frame casts a shadow. And so what he would do was he would paint his own shadow so that it wouldn't influence the picture too much when it was in a frame in a gallery, which is quite clever. Okay, so I'm just also painting in the shadow. And some of this darker green You'll get little bits of it maybe down in the bridge in the superstructure certainly a lot more in the area of the trees the vegetation but look at he doesn't actually paint the trees he just paints little dabs of color and that's all it needs i think it's wonderful so it's very liberating i'm enjoying this okay oops uh, a little bit here um but more than oh than anything else they're all kind of in the in the air, in the atmosphere. So there's this green. Who'd have thought of putting green in the sky? It's marvellous. The next colour that Suraf seems to use is actually a dark green and I'm going to just basically use this green that's in my palette here and just go straight for it. This is an emerald green um, which is, looks very similar to what he's using and I'm going to, you'll notice there's green down in these shadows. Who'd have thought green shadows, eh? There's green down in these shadows and there's sort of, it's a green, um, but uh And there's more of this darker green in the vegetation down here. And there's some here, and there's just little bits in the, this lower part of the sky. And you think, just, oh, what did he see? What did he, how did he do this? You know, but how? Okay, a little green in the, in the shadow that's going around the painting. <laughs> too much. So I am heavy handed, it's no doubt at all. Um, some in here. Obviously in this foliage area here, there's some green.
Okay. And then the last colour he seems to use, and now I'm swapping over to my warm brush and my warm water, is he uses a red. And the red looks quite a deep red, a deepish red. Um, I'm going to just use a, I'm going to use a cadmium red here and just go straight in with this. Um, probably uses a deeper red, probably more of a kind of a, a Venetian red, but I'm going to wave caution to the wind and I'm going to do it with this colour here. And it's going to be very bright and of course it's going to be contrasting with all this, um, with all this green. It's going to be a very uh, different And then there's red down in the shadows, would you believe? Of course there is. Red shadows. And red in this shadow that he's painted around the frame. because sometimes I mean I'm, I'm doing this you know as a demonstration but uh, sometimes you will find that uh, other dots you're putting down aren't aren't dry yet and you find your red being contaminated with green or just as soon as you see that happens just clean your brush and uh, start all to start over nothing wrong with that I think this painting he did was a bit, a lot bigger than what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a little copy of it, a little study. Um, I think that he, uh, you know, he, it, it, because just looking at the brush strokes, he probably could get his brush strokes much smaller. But that's not really what we're doing here. We're just um, you know, picking up his technique, uh, you know, learning how we would do something like this, how we would capture this. Uh, so. Um, now, at this point, um, it's looking yeah quite a, like an abstract, more like a Matisse than a, uh, a Seurat. Uh, but um, what you, you can do is you just can keep going. You can, um, as I say, as the acrylic dries, you might then think, actually, I should have put more down more yellow, or I should have put down more red, or this green, or I need to put a little bit something like, even lighter. I mean, I think, actually, I need to put a much lighter green, a, sort of a, 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 a white with just a tiniest little hint of green down in the sky. And that's what I'll do now. Um, so this is almost like white with just a little bit of leftover green, almost like you know, oh, hardly any green at all. It's sort of a white with a touch of green. Let's just paint the brush a little bit neater. And then we can go over here. We can kind of, yeah, I think it does. It needs to be lightened. I think that works nicely. And with my other brush, I just noticed actually there should be some red in this foliage area here. They're very red, actually. I would imagine this is probably painted in autumn and that's the sort of, the cold autumn light of of Paris, which I've have I been to autumn? Yes, I have been to Paris in the autumn. It's beautiful at all seasons, but uh, yeah. There we go, and then I'll just go carry on with my white, just kind of um, going in and maybe just dousing down some of this darker green, just going over the top. Really, I like to sort of get it in where you're getting into a flow and you, instead of being all meticulous, like I'm sure uh, Sura was, I like it where you get sort of the point where you kind of, there's a rhythm and you see it appearing and you're working like this, dot, 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 dot. That's, a, that's the type of a, a kind of a approach I like. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it there and basically you can keep going. You can, I think there's some more yellow that needs to go into places. I think people, there's bits that need to be darker. 
Uh, but I think um, that uh, get, will get you going. Um, you, you know, you'll look at it and you'll think maybe that needs a bit more yellow. But that basically is um, uh, how I would approach uh, copying a Sura. And of course, then the next thing you need to do is um, then get photographs or go out into the wide open world and start painting reality, painting your own pictures, painting, a, copying a photograph or, you know, you know, copying a still life or whatever, but doing your own still life and taking this technique and thinking, right, how would Sura approach this? And then uh, doing it that way. Okay, thank you. So here is a photograph of my painting. Uh, I've done this in, you know, not, it doesn't take me that long to do, uh, quite fast. It's not very big. This is the type of scale I'd like to see you work at. It doesn't look exactly like a Sura because I uh, don't think my wife would allow me to spend that long on it. Uh, I'd have the same trouble he had. But it's uh, it looks more like a Matisse, which is fine because I love Matisse. But this is the point. This is the point is by using his technique, you find your own style. You basically break painting down into these dots, into its smallest components of colour. And then what you do is, as you do it, you'll find your own way of doing it. Uh, and there were many people who were disciples of uh, Seurat, Paul Signac being the most fa famous. And they all did something different, but they were basically copying the same technique. The other thing that... Um, uh, astounds me when I look at this is just how few colours he was using. He was using a yellow, a pale green, a mid green, a darker green and a red and that's basically it. That's all he used and yet he created this um, painting that's full of atmosphere, full of colour. As you go along you'll notice other things. I noticed that he's used a, a kind of a cream colour, a yellow mixed with white, uh, but that's great. Um, as you go along you could even change the colours because I'm not even sure this is the right colour that Sura painted it in. But um, um, anyway, um, all I would say is that's what I want you to do. Work small, enjoy it, and get cracking.